Lots of insane things to unpack in this video. We have Pierre Poiliev who takes pot shots at the World Economic Forum, rightfully so, and he continues to bash Justin Trudeau in lots of just subtle ways and very obvious ways. And well, the Liberal Party has now begun their slander attack against the Conservatives, and it's not really having the reaction that they are hoping will, nor will it ever. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage everyone to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and please consider turning turning post notifications on so you can actually be uh, notified of upcoming videos. Now, normally I take this opportunity to either give a shout out to one of my amazing sponsors or even push the uh, the stickers that I sell and, and merchandise, but I'm not doing that right now. Um, instead, I'm, I'm asking for help. And believe me, this is, um, I'm having to put my ego at the door here because I'm having a hard time coping with this. I've got two dogs. And I've had my dogs for five or six years. I used to live in a van with them and the, my dogs mean the world to me. And they're also the protectors for my kid. And it's just, this is a pivotal moment in my life where I'm now being, I'm being given a curse. It feels like, um, my dog has cancer. It was a big cancer thing on her leg, and I had to go deal with that today. It started off as something what seemed like a hot spot a week ago, and now it's evolved, and it's turned into something that is extremely traumatic um, for me and my family and, and everyone, and uh, I'm asking for help. I'm asking for help in, and it, believe me, there's lots of people have helped in many other ways by purchasing merch or buying a coffee or giving money to PayPal, but if you feel like um, helping a family keep their dog to any capacity, then I do have a link down in the description for a GoFundMe that I just whipped up right now to help with my dog's surgery. And this is the state of my dog. This is my Husky, and this is a cancer piece that she is getting removed off of her leg later this week. And um, I've been just a mess all day today going around smoking cigarettes, trying to cope with this stress in my life. And then I've just whipped up this GoFundMe here. And I feel like a total schmuck for asking the internet and my viewers for money when you can get, you can pay money for stickers or merch and you can actually get something. And I just feel very humiliated by having to do this, but please, if, um, if you can find it in the goodness of your heart, um, that would be much appreciated. And also if you have any advice for how to deal with a pet getting cancer and potentially dying, um, please let me know down in the comments. Cause it's not just about money. It's also the emotional aspect, but let's uh, get into this YouTube video here and do what I do best and shit. Talk to government. <sighs> if I can find it in me to do it for this video. So we have the seat projection. Uh, it has not budged since yesterday. We still have the Conservatives at 198 estimated seats. They only need 170 uh, for a majority. And when you go down to the odds of winning, you still have the Conservatives at 99% likely and the Liberals at one. And the odds of outcome are still 91% likely for the Conservative government and 9% for uh, a minority government. So this is awesome all around news. It means nothing has changed in the past day or a few days. And I think that within the next few weeks or even months, you're going to see the, the conservatives take that up from 91% likelihood of winning a majority government, probably up to 95, maybe even 98, 99% likely. And once that inevitably happens, it's going to be catastrophic. The media is going to have to address it way more than they already are. CBC, CTV, government funded media groups here in Canada, they're totally biased towards the liberal government. They absolutely support them to every capacity. They acknowledge some, you know, hiccups and, and controversies here and there, but it's not as objective. It's not as, um, as, as like impactful as it is from independent YouTube videos like this, or even, uh, you know, uh, alternative media such as True North and Rebel News. So you're really going to see things change in the next couple of months and something to keep an eye out for now we're getting uh into trudeau is on a retreat the liberal cabinet is actually on a retreat right now and this is a video on uh, global news ministers gathered here in montreal late sunday afternoon kicking things off with a working dinner the big focus on the agenda affordability everything around the cost of living will be discussed over the next few days that includes housing challenges grocery prices and childcare. 
We're going to continue to focus on issues that are important to Canadians. It's the big topic of conversation among Canadians with so many struggling with inflation and high prices. It's also what the opposition is focused on as they hammer the government about a lack of action on these files and will continue to focus on when the House returns at the end of January. The Liberals have been trailing in the polls for months and this is an opportunity to reset, refocus and see if they can win back some of that middle class that has always been so prominent in their messaging. Liberals are trying to make the argument that they're taking action quickly, especially on housing governments. There is no class that supports the Liberals right now. There, There is none. There is no middle class, lower class, upper class that supports Liberals. The Liberals openly are trying to gouge every single Canadian to death via taxes. There is no tax bracket. There is no quality of life where you're like, hmm, well, I make this amount of money and I would like to keep making this amount of money. And so I support the Liberals openly. No, nobody, the Liberals do not have any policies that benefit people. I'm sorry. It's just, it's not there. Sources highlighting to Global News the nearly two dozen housing agreements that have been signed since the last cabinet retreat in PEI in the summer. But obviously there's no quick fix to that problem. You can't build homes overnight. A complicated intersection in files here comes with immigration, with the government considering a cap on international students. And further down the agenda, a focus on Canada-U.S. relations. The Canadian ambassador to the U.S. is one of the special guests addressing cabinet on that file, common in a U.S. election year. The government needs to plan for every outcome, bracing for the possibility of a second Donald Trump administration. A big question here is whether we'll see anything significant announced, especially on housing or immigration. The cabinet retreat continues until Tuesday. (laughs) All right. So it's funny that um, they're on a retreat when they should be doing some work. And we're going to take a look at Pierre Poiliev and what he has to say about this, because he's got a couple things to say about this retreat here. Pierre did a live stream earlier, and we've got a couple clips pulled up from that. He's retreating on everything he has done. (laughs) over the last eight years. I love that shit eating grin because it's, well, he's saying that because they're on a retreat right now, in case he, that phew, went over your head. Right? After eight years of Trudeau, life costs more, work doesn't pay, housing costs have doubled, crime, chaos, drugs, and disorder are common in our streets, and he divides to distract from all that he has broken. Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost. And now he wants you to know he's a changed man. He's not the same Justin Trudeau of the last eight years. He's going to be completely different. He's in retreat. After two years of me warning about the inflation crisis, his deficits and money printing were causing, he admits that things cost too much. After me warning that his massive carbon tax would drive millions of people to food banks, he now gives a pause and retreats on that as well. After my warnings, that him giving money, billions of dollars, to incompetent local bureaucracies and mayors to block housing construction, that we would have a crisis. He admits that the crisis is real and claims that he's changed his approach and mind on that as well. After my warnings that if you let out repeat violent and property criminals again and again on early bail and parole and have weak borders that we would lose cars to to theft, he now admits that that is a problem too and he's going to hold a big summit to talk about it. And after he spent eight years ruining our immigration system, a system that was the best in the world, the system that brought my brilliant and beautiful wife here, he now admits that he screwed that up too, and he is retreating on that by cutting back by over 150,000, the number of international students. This is a problem of his own making, his own incompetent incompetent and incompetent minister Sean Frazier was the one that allowed the program to to grow in the words of another liberal minister out of control. So you have 16 people crammed into basements in Brampton. You have housing costs rising faster than at any time in Canadian history and anywhere else in the world. You have what the Liberals now admit were fake and phony colleges for which Liberals were the ones that issued the study permits. Now they tell you they've changed their mind. Justin Trudeau is a new man. He admits now that he was wrong on inflation, housing, immigration, and crime. He wants you to forget the last eight years and elect him as a brand new man. We don't need the Prime Minister to change. We need to change. Hold on a second. Did he do that on purpose? and crime. 
He wants you to forget the last eight years and elect him as a brand new mime, man. A brand new mime? Is that what he said? <laughs> That's an unflattering photo or screenshot of Pierre. It's very interesting. It's very interesting that Trudeau is so delusional that he actually thinks that he can um, win people over at this point. And, well, Pierre is taking the opposite approach. He's denounced taxes. He's saying, I mean, his whole message is axe the tax. Like, it's right there on his freaking podium. And not only that, but also as per the likely, the title and thumbnail, he's against the World Economic Forum. And he's denounced them at the highest level. So I got that clip pulled up. Thank you. This will be the final question. Thank you. Drea Humphrey again with Rebel News. In the past several times, you have denounced the World Economic Forum. And you've made it clear to pledge that if your party forms government, you mm -hmm. will ban your cabinet ministers from being involved with the World Economic Forum. Yet, mm -hmm. I'm also aware of many Canadians who applaud you for saying that, but also have reservations on whether or not the claim is authentic because they see images of your name being on the World Economic Forum site and also because you worked closely with former MP John Baird, who at one point was a World Economic Forum young global leader in a campaign. So my question for clarification purposes, uh, for those concerned about foreign globalist organizations potentially encroaching on our nation's sovereignty, does your pledge to ban cabinet ministers from being associated with or involved with the WEF expand to those you hire as staff as well as advisors? Yes. No staff, no ministers, no MPs in my caucus will be involved whatsoever in that organization. Uh, it is a group of high-flying, high-tax, high-carbon hypocrites who all got on their private jets to fly off to a remote ski village where they talked about how working-class people should not be allowed to heat their homes or drive their pickup trucks. Uh, I'm not going to work for a group of globalist billionaires who serve their own interests at the expense of everyone else. And I'd like to specifically point out Mark Carney. Here he was celebrating the central banks who caused the inflation by printing trillions of dollars so that people like uh, multimillionaires like him could have their asset values inflated while the purchasing power of working class people and seniors was wasted away by inflation. A massive wealth transfer from the have nots to the have yachts. A common sense conservative government will work, will bring home control of our democracy to this country, and it's not just on, on that issue. We will ban the IRGC to end the, the interference of the 700 agents that are operating in this country on behalf of the terrorist regime in Tehran, and that's according to Global News. We will, will shut down foreign controlled police stations. We will bring in a foreign influence registry. We will bring home control of our democracy and we'll make this a country that works for its people, the common people, and the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Thank you. Notice that he didn't look down at all at a script. He didn't have anything that he was reading. That was just all from memory. And there wasn't a single um or ah the way Justin Trudeau speaks. And that's just so attractive to people, to Canadians. And I mean, I'll say it. I'm desperate. I'm desperate for a new leader. I'm desperate to get Trudeau out and I'm looking for anyone that can fill that void. And I hope it's Pierre. It seems like it's Pierre. He's doing a fantastic job so far. And I think that he's winning the hearts of millions of people, not just here in Canada, but he's getting international news. I mean, Joe Rogan has openly endorsed Pierre Poiliev. So have other, you know, high profile American citizens. And it's just, it's fantastic all around that he's getting into that into that spotlight and he's really just getting out of the um out of the little shell that canada is and he's getting that international uh attention but i'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments are you pro economic forum if that's the case you might be on the wrong youtube channel or are you against it if that's the case then welcome to the channel if you're new here uh it's awesome that you have so many conservative members of parliament here in canada that are openly standing up against it not just pierre paliev he's the biggest voice and the the biggest 
biggest, um, uh, you know, night for the conservatives. He's the leader of the freaking conservative party at the federal level. But you also have provincial conservative members, right? So like Danielle Smith, who's the premier of Alberta. That's a huge position. She has a massive influence. She runs an entire province politically. And she has openly denounced the World Economic Forum. And so you're seeing it happen more and more and more. And it's creating this divide that we're seeing. If you're liberal, chances are you are pro-World Economic Forum. If you have a brain, chances are you do not like the World Economic Forum. So just a crazy divide. But hey, that's the political spectrum these days. It's just division. Speaking of division, here we go. The Liberal Party says, and this is our official Twitter or X account. It says, this weekend, Germans were out protesting the same far-right political party that Pierre Polyev's conservatives met with last year. We can't let Pierre Polyev's, uh, let Pierre Polyev bring far-right politics to Canada. And this is what you get, this is what's known as being ratioed. 743 likes, over 1,000 comments. And this is the, the backlash that they're getting in the comment section. Freedom is only extreme if you're a communist. I'll drop a like on that. Meanwhile, here in Canada, we have pro-Hamas rallies all the time in Canadian cities, and liberals seem to do nothing about it, which is pretty pretty sad. Um, stop the liberals. Raise your hand for those desensitized from the liberal fear-mongering. Ba-bum. Shush. Canadians want an election. About Dan time. Over here in your secure HQ bathroom, we installed the deluxe tampon dispenser. Let's take a look at the uh, clip here. Here in Germany, tens of thousands have turned out to protest against the rise of the far right. You know what? I don't want to watch it. I'm going to be honest. I don't even want to watch it because it's just going to be slanderous and it's just going to be the far right. If you're pro freedom, if you watch this YouTube channel, you are far right. I mean, this photo here, like it's just a bunch of people that are standing up for freedom and freedom of expression and trying to um, to stand up against communism, which is what's bleeding into Canada. And a lot of people just don't they don't see that. And that's OK. It's okay for now, but the normies are going to be waking up and by having people like Pierre Polyev reach into that spotlight, having the conservative movement, having more kind of based ideas circulating the internet and videos is fantastic. And um, it's going to shift the polls. You already see it in America. DeSantis stepped down to support Trump and you're going to see a lot of uh, more support, more notorious people, Canadian and Americans standing up and showing their support for Pierre Polyev as we approach the upcoming election in 2025. As we're going to end today's video, Everybody, I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Good, bad, ugly, anything you want to talk about. And also, again, reiterating, um, I'm looking for any advice for anyone who's had their dog have cancer, whether they made they made it through or not. Um, how was that process? Because I'm, I'm not going to lie, folks. I am, uh, I am struggling a little bit. I'm on the struggle bus with that. But thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.